This is a Touchphone 400, which version? 400 VC, of course, because it's got the volume control. I think these were made for handset use. But this is one that's been retro brighted. It's an Atlinx Telstra. It's the one with a two rows of buttons rather than three rows scattered around a bit. So it's one of the later ones. What year does it say? 0203. I'm not sure which one of these is the actual manufactured date. I assume M is manufactured, but then, don't know, we've got a revision. A lot of them have two dates on them. But yeah, I think Atlinx, uh, Exicom, I think, went broke. Alcatel got taken over by Atlinx, and then later Thompson, I think, they became. Although I think they're kind of related anyway. Hard to keep up with all this stuff. And it's one of the reasons there's like 20, 30, 40, who knows how many different varieties of these things. Oh, bit of a gum tree got in there when I rinsed it out. Still got an STC on the mould. Which were the original part of STC AWA. Who made the original ones. And they've gone on from there. I'll just dry that out a bit. Because we've still got some moisture in this. And the problem with all of these is the keypads are pretty dirty in them. So I'll give that a bit of a clean up. And yeah, there's quite a few changes of the way these things were put together over the years. They just found easier and easier ways to manufacture them, I think, and cheaper ways, of course. The less work you've got to put in, the better. These later ones, they got rid of the little flap that lifted up. You've just got a, th a thin, clear plastic window over the little paper label you put in with all your phone memories, who they're for. The other ones had a separate flap, so that would have been a bit of extra manufacturing to fit us another part to it. And that, like a hard, clear plastic window, which is yeah, this type here. Hard window, and yeah, we've got the what, four, three rows of buttons. Four, well, one, two, three, four, five, really, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah, not ideal. And from a manufacturing point of view, I think the window for this one's gone missing, but they just have a little thin, flexible plastic one. I like to give these a proper clean out while I've got them apart, so that's, I guess, one advantage of retro brighting it is you get to pull the whole phone to bits and clean it which you'd probably do anyway potentially so at least in this case I've already got it apart for another reason I can get two things done at once because they do look a ton better once you clean them up even though you don't necessarily notice the keys are particularly dirty it definitely makes a difference so that's pretty good and these have got the sort of bit that hooks over so that's the little flap that used to lift up, but now they make it so it hooks over the uh, main case of the phone. And we've got to get all this rubbery stuff back in place. A bit of dust on this side too, by the look of it. And this one, of course, just straight onto the circuit board. So contacts onto the circuit board, whereas these earlier ones they had like a membrane instead of the circuit board and this I guess it's probably in the end cheaper to make a circuit board that plugs into the other half than sort of via a header and solid pins don't know if it make an awful lot of difference but that's one of the changes they did the other ones more match the original membrane keyboard ones Oh yeah, they fit like, oh, up in there. Yeah, there's a couple, a couple of slots in this end bit for the edge of the circuit board to go into. You've got to lift it up a bit. Bit of a fiddly thing to get in there, there it is. And then the keyboard connector goes on. And there's a couple of clips at the front here. And they've got the hook switch on the circuit board. Whereas the old one, that's the hook switch sticking out the end there presses on that bit 
Let's have them put their signature or something on there. In the factory or whatever, in the printing stage. And then there, this bit goes over that. Up and over. Oops, just a little bit of moisture there I probably should get rid of. So it comes up through there. And into place. And we've got to screw this down, and this one's got an extra LED in it that a normal one doesn't have. And this one's got a white hook switch that sits the opposite way around to the normal one and presses on the little switch there. And we've got a little bezel thing, or a little diffuser thing, I guess it is, more than a bezel. For the LED that just pushes in, LED pushes in from that side. A couple of small screws for the piezo, for the ringer, and we're going to put our volume thing back on. Fits on a couple of little pins that stick up to slide. Oh, oops, which is coming off. Oh, that's a bit of something else. That seems to dry it out all right. I do have a label there to get rid of and some sticky tape. Not that it matters so much underneath. Is that just going to fit? Oh, have I got something in the way of the screw? Yeah, I've got something in the way of the screw. Always got to watch that. Doesn't matter getting that LED. Uh, was it loop around that capacitor or something? That's it, I think. Oh, the volume controls fall off. Always happen with these fiddly things. Damage and uh, something stuck to it. Amazing what gets on these things over the years. And dirt down in there, or food, or something. If that's lumpy, that's probably the same stuff. Bit of metho I often get these little sort of black scrape marks and stuff off. And any gluey stuff or tape residue, or who knows what's on them. Go down that side. Maybe even put a little bit of cleaner in there. And just poke a bit of paper down there. Sometimes you gotta actually scrape it out with a screwdriver. We'll get the worst of it out. Then you just poke a bit of paper in there to finish it off. That'll make it look a heap better. Sometimes even just your fingernail down there with some paper. That really makes them look like new again if you can get all the dirt out of there. And we've got our handset cord, which on this one's actually nice. It's one good thing about these later touch phone 400 phones, they're very common. But also means you can pick them up cheap and get nice handset cords off them a lot of the time because they haven't had the use 
are some of the other phones that are a good 10 years older and basically done 10 years more work though not all touch phone 200 cords are unpluggable which makes life difficult if I could get those handsets apart easily without any damage and I almost now that I know how to do them probably could it's almost tempting to like get these cords and just poke them in even if you don't connect them cut the modular plug off or whatever or just poke it inside a touch phone 200 cord to make it look like new again sort of thing you can do if you just want them for display which is all they're really good for now nice to keep the functionality but if you want a really clean looking phone with nice cords about the only way to get them is to get these touch phone 400s and pinch a cord off that and like I say even if you have to fake it on the the handsets that don't have a modular plug on the handset end you just got to squeeze them in there they just clamp into the two halves of the handset so I do grab a few of these touch phone 400s if I see them cheap just for that purpose unfortunately I think I did check and because of the way they've changed this I don't think you can swap the top case over but you do get if you get a nice white handset the other thing is to swap the whole handset and curly cord if it's just a standard white one they're usually not sun damaged like the other ones though some of them are really bad you do see touch phone 400s that look like well, they've been in the sun for 40 years but that's gone up pretty well I've got to find a little window for it the only other thing I'll probably do is scrape all the rest of this sticky tape off here and it's glue and get rid of the old tip shop sticker off there at least they put it on the underside for once often they stick them on the front and you've got to spend ages getting them off again here you can sort of scrape it quicker and maybe if you make a few marks on it it's not the end of the world just give it a little cut. I don't want to scratch it too much but it'll probably leave some fine scratches at least you can get the label off quickly looks like the thumbnail will get it which is good so that's a what is it TF 400 VC volume control version I think a lot of these didn't have this volume control on them anymore. The Touchphone 200s had it. But I have to double check, but I know Dick Smith was selling one with a light on it, which I assume is this one, and you could get like your secretary's handset type thing where someone can plug a handset in, want well, a headset, I should say, plug a headset in in place of this normal handset. And that way you can just have it sitting on your head if you're getting lots of calls. And not sure how whether they've got a button on them to allow you to answer the call so maybe it's got extra wiring in here I'll have to have a look they did show the handset in the catalog as well the headset I should say so I'd be interested to see whether the headset some of them had a button on them I think to act like the hang-up switch so if the phone rang you press your little button and you answer it and you don't have to pick the handset up you don't have to have it in your hand you can do whatever on the computer hands-free but it also means, you know, if you're in office cubicles, you don't want hand, the normal hands-free where everyone can hear what's going on and it makes lots of noise. It's one you can hear it privately and it's only your talking into it that makes any noise. But yeah, not, not as common these things, but there are quite a few around. And yeah, the earlier ones had the same model and there is another one with an LED, which isn't a volume control, I forget what it is now. Uh, this is one of the other ones message waiting this is the earlier style touch phone 200 mw for message waiting i guess looks like this was sold this is permitted what does it say i still permitted this message wait telephone for use only on a pabx extension so that's a pabx one probably not as common 
What is this? I think you could use anywhere. I'll have to look up in that Dick Smith or Tandy catalogue and see what the story was. That's got that one back together for now, so thanks for watching. Okay, this touch phone is the, I think it's the earlier version of the volume control. This is one of the early uh, membrane keyboard versions from the 80s. And they had this, is it an expander module they call it? Touch phone 200 expander. 550 slash 104. It's a warranty expires the 30th of 7th, 92. So maybe this one, this must have been sold at some point. And this has got these other wires that go up inside. Similar to the hands-free one. So I think we'll get this apart. This one definitely needs a retro bright. It'll look a heap better if it's not so yellow. And looks like we've got several screws. That's what I think that one undoes the handset. The other thing I haven't got and I've got to find out is the power packs of these things, what they actually used. Don't think there's much information on them at all. Can possibly work it out from the circuit inside. So I can't really, here comes the phone. Which is just a standard touch phone 200 only i can get access to that bit Put these cream cables out so basically this phone gets fed via the other stuff so that's quite yellow alcatel stc telecom australia c89 approval oh there it is 4389 so it's week 43 1989 the ring of pitch that's the volume normal 600 ohm tone 600 millisecond tone 100 millisecond and decadic but yeah one of the early ones there's a few different keyboard versions that's right these are a pull out little label thing i can leave that in there anyway that'll all come out as one piece remove all these cables I guess the line cord goes up in there somewhere and that's the handset Gee, that really does not want to fit in there very tight fit so the handset's gonna have to go in and be done that doesn't have a modular connector on it line cord can go away and did I undo enough to undo these? I know there's two more screws. Now, I don't know what is actually, did this have a separate volume control on it? Oh, I've never really even looked at, yeah, separate volume. So I think these are more, not sure if they actually go louder or what the story is, but I think they're more for headset use like for secretaries and those sort of people office workers that are on the phone all day call center workers i guess so it's got an s550 slash 160 s550 issue 2 issue 1 689 probably the build date you got a standard power connector there so I can probably look up, maybe pull on it off and see what chips it has in it or something. And see if I can work out. That looks, is that an optocoupler? No, that's a four pin or eight pin, two eight pin. Not sure what the LED, maybe that's to say that you're on or off hook. The second board is just a wiring board, so it doesn't really do anything. It's quite a large circuit board for just a couple of connectors and nothing else seems a bit odd to make it like that but they probably got their reasons unless it's for a loud ringer or something because we've got it looks like a blocking capacitor oh yeah for the ringer so we've got an lm3909 which is an led flasher so that must flash that led we've got a tea1081 no idea what that is some sort of audio chip and an MC34119 Motorola chip. So maybe if I look those up, find out what their power requirements are. And of course, metal oxide Varista, surge protection, there's a bridge rectifier, xenodiode, probably sets the voltage. 
at least off I assume that is line voltage let's have a look where is this that connector goes straight into this plug into us oh, an actual 8 pin connector in there so it looks like that voltage that's a bit odd if that's a power pack it goes up there the grey and orange wire there I should assume they're two end ones one of which doesn't even look like it's connected is this a double sided board? that can't be right I'd have to beat that out with a multimeter and see it, but it doesn't look like it powers that little board. That little board looks like it may be line powered by that bridge rectifier. Okay. I would have seen the grey wire goes to there. And it does. Is this a multi layer board then? That goes to there. Neither of which is seemingly connected to anything. That doesn't make any sense at all. That's what the line socket or something. So maybe they're not used. Well, that's very strange. No wonder they never have a power pack with them. It's got a, like a power. Oh, is it? Well, it's not a power takeoff either. So it's not connected to anything. It just seems to come across this socket to the two end wires. That's not a double sided board. Wait, uh, what, I must be missing something. Tracks literally go across that connector. Unless this is, a, could this be a multi layer board? Doesn't look like it. I can't see any other tracks other than the ones on the bottom. Why would you put a socket? I mean, to be fair, the socket's all tarnished. Doesn't look like it's ever been used. The little tongue bit that presses on the outside of the barrel. No sign it's ever scraped against something. Very odd. Very strange indeed not to connect to anything. Am I missing something? Seems to be unconnected. The screws aren't connected to anything. The two wires definitely come off there. Into those two tracks, go the grey and orange wire, grey and orange wire come across and go to nothing. They're definitely on the end pins of that. Very weird. And it, I assume these are line powered, wait, where's the phone line? That's the phone line there. Yeah, some of that comes across, should be the two centre ones I think. That one. And this one here that comes across that's one of them comes to the fourth wire probably the green the other one yeah, they both go to the other connector and the third the yeah, third wire it's so a green and yellow maybe green and yellow are the third and fourth here too it's those two they go to the mov they go the ringing capacitor blocking cap if that's what it is and the other side I bet goes to the bridge the mov here goes through the mov oh wait that's across the line no yes it goes to the mov to the ringing so that only would let ringing or does it we've got the bridge rectifier there Two diodes facing that way is, and they're not connected, so there's one that way. So that's one side of the bridge, which goes to the line. So I guess that's the other side of the bridge, or is that the outlet of the bridge? Other side of the bridge comes across here to whatever that is. What is that? Oh, a resistor back that way. To a resistor comes back to another resistor comes back to the capacitor so that bridge is only powered so when the phone line's ringing that will probably make a lm3909 flash this is a problem with not knowing what this phone actually does
I must need power for the rest of it. That makes that flash. This pot goes into, is that a capacitor or something? Yep. Well, if that's the inlet to the pot. No, that's the inlet there. Oh, it goes to that capacitor. Then now we're finding the track and it goes through that resistor. So this chip is an audio chip, MC34119. A simple instruction book or something that tells you what this phone actually did would probably solve all the problems. It looks like when the phone rings, maybe it's a silent ringer for starters. Is that the idea or it rings and you hit, see the light flash? So what does the volume control do? And is it made, well if it's got the handset going through there, this obviously wasn't made for a for headset use. But the headset, the, sorry, I should say the handset, the original handset, is that connected to this chip? Yeah, it does look like it does go to this chip. So maybe this is just a louder phone, they're just louder for hearing impaired, or maybe, well, I guess if you're hearing impaired, maybe you want a flashing light and you want to be able to turn the headset, I guess I should plug one in, I've got to get my phone tester going or I could hook it up, I do have an analogue adapter for the internet here, I probably should plug it in and see what it does, see if that increases the volume of the handset way above what a normal one does, I reckon that's what the idea is. That's a visual aid to know that it's ringing. And is that it? Still don't know what this other, what's this other IC doing here? Not, doesn't look like much of it's connected. It's got four pins hooked up. But to what? Uh, I'd have to trace every bloody wire in this thing. A couple of them go there, to the other pins of this thing that are connected, which go to this connector, which go into the phone. I might just look up the data sheet, I think. But I've got to take these two panels off as well. Because they've got to be done. Base piece, I think, needs doing. Yeah, yeah, rather brown. Give all, get all the dust out of it. Those bits can be basically screwed back on minus the electronics. So if I put one screw in each of those, stop them floating about. Set. I'll put my phone to bits and this is another one that's got two nice patches and the rest back half of it back half of course it's been under this I've, uh, a slight bit of yellowing around there but other than that does that really show it? Hey, it does I think I'll put yeah well if I just put this back in the case as well I'm gonna have to I think that'll cover all this Bottom bit up, it won't be seen, won't be chemically affected. Now, that hopefully is one of the last, if not the last, touch phone 200 I have to do. I must have done about 20 of the damn things right now, and it's getting a bit old at this point. Yeah, keyboard should be fine. Luckily these don't change colour. I'm surprised that plastic hasn't because that's the sort of thing that does. And I usually pop these out just so it doesn't do anything to the grey plastic. It's not hard to get them out and the volume control. Of 
quite a bit of dust in this one. So we'll just hold those two bits together with one screw. Put that back in there. Screw that back in. And that is ready to cook in the sun and the hydrogen peroxide, hopefully bringing that back to a nice colour. I probably would have a spare one of these phones, possibly somewhere I could clean up if this one doesn't come any good. Because basically that phone is just a standard unit, so I could easily turf that well, as far as I know it's a standard unit. Don't see why it wouldn't be, so we'll get that one in solution and see what it comes up like. Okay, got these two phones back together and the weather's been really bad. Haven't had much in the way of sun, so I've given up on them for now and put them back together. They're definitely better than what they were. I think those bits are pretty close to right. Unfortunately, this handset with the cord ended up over part of it and I think either the plastic interacted or just blocked the sun. So there's a few curly cord marks on the handset. Not a big deal because can, you can change the handsets over if you've got a good one. This one still has a slight square bit where a label was. But I think I might have to wait to next summer and get some fresh um, peroxide on there. See how we go. But the best reference really is this one which is a brand new one. This has never been out of the box as far as I know. Could be slightly off colour but it's very close to mint. Still in its wrapping. I don't think it ever has been used. There's not a mark on it really. And that's really the only way to do a colour reference of these, I think. Often you fool yourself that you've got them pretty right, but that's definitely more yellow than this one. A good white handset. It's not bad though. I mean, I'm quite happy that that's probably as good as it's going to get. This one here, yeah, the handset really needs a bit more work, especially with those marks on it. And yeah, you can see it's slightly yellower. For some reason, this actual foam bit didn't lighten up as much as the other bit. But that's the only real reference you've got of how white they are. I've left the line cord off this one and put everything else back together. It'll probably never do more than be displayed, but one day hopefully I will get some of these running. I did find some info on these. Supposedly the light flickers when it rings. It's just a visual ringing indicator, I think, and the volume is just for the internal handset. It's not for a plug-in headset. I did look in the Dick Smith catalogue and the headset version of these actually has two extra buttons. It's, I think it's the only version of these phones has an extra couple of buttons. One of them is to turn the headset on and off. I think the recall flash is moved or something. I think redial's in the same place and there's some other button. I forget what it was. So I have to keep an eye out for one of those. It's got a yeah just an LED without a fitting around it. No bezel or anything, just a little red LED here. And I'm not sure whether it's got different sockets on the back or what. But from the look of that, you probably can plug a headset into another socket or something. So it's got the full set of keys up here like a TF400, but it is definitely touch phone 200. So I have to keep an eye out. I do have one picture of one that was on eBay and it was in horrible condition, which is why I probably didn't worry about it. They probably wanted $50 for a yellowed one with all tape and marks all over it and stuff. But I'll keep an eye out for one of them. That's one of the few models I don't have to co complete the collection. I think I've got just about everything else except one of the earlier versions of these. Some of these had round bits on the keypads. So there's a few varieties. But they're getting there now. I might actually be able to get these on display at some stage. I'd like to make maybe a sloping shelf or something to sit them on. Just get all the main varieties out there. It'd be kind of cool to see them all side by side. I have sort of made a compilation of pictures of them. But I think I need to re-photograph my own collection because some seem to have gone missing and stuff or never got added into the right folder on the computer or something. But at least they're, you know, they're what I'd call much more respectable. Not perfect, but they're really good enough for a collection probably. I would like to get that one a slightly lighter shade. I reckon I can just take this phone out of this housing bit. And like I say, I could either find another one of these that's in good condition or give that one a bit more of a go. But I think I'll just wait until summer comes back. It's not very good weather this year and getting a decent day of sunlight and the sun's quite low down here in when we start getting into autumn and winter. So it's no, nowhere near as efficient as in the summer. But that gets those back together. I'll stack them away in some plastic crates for now 
and maybe see about doing them next summer. There is one more phone I might try and lighten up. So even though I don't think I've got much hope, it's an interesting one to have a look at. And these were very rare out in the wild in my experience, but maybe certain businesses or on the mainland or something had them, but this is a telecom pursuit phone. And they're quite hard to get hold of. This one's rather yellowed. And I did kind of get a little bit ripped off. This was an eBay one. If you ever buy one of these, you need to check whether the internal batteries have been sorted out. Are they in there? I forget where they were. But these do have batteries in them. And if no one's, if they can't tell you what condition they're in, then you don't want to touch it here. Yeah, there it is all green and corroded down in there. I didn't bother sending it back or complaining about it because it was like the seller probably didn't even know they were in there. I certainly didn't. And I did want to get one of these, so I thought, stuff it, I'll take the sort of loss in a way. It's a little bit of damage I wasn't expecting. I knew it was obviously the rest of it, the condition of it. But if you do buy one of these, I'd be, you know, at least checking that someone has knows that that is empty of batteries and is willing to vouch for its condition preferably they're willing to show you a photo of it because you know look at the crystals and green stuff growing on this that battery terminals i think pretty much broken off or well, might be all right that might be the one that goes on the positive end there's this an energizer bit of energizer badge still attached in there they were completely shot but that is one warning with these but i don't think i've ever looked inside it or any of these one of the screws is rusted that's another bad sign we may have major damage inside as well which is not a big deal if it's only for display i think i've only seen this one in one mint condition one come up for sale i wish i'd waited for the mint one to turn up oh yeah i don't think it's going to be too pretty in here something's floating around in there bits of broken plastic so we've got a and a switch cover that is that something i've oh yeah it'd be this switch i just disconnected that line socket looks all corroded as well yeah definitely green on the inside of it oh that's what the clip is broken off uh, look at the green stuff left behind here that's all green and corroded so those batteries did quite a job on this thing not surprising but i don't know that i'm ever going to try and use the thing not sure what the batteries are for i guess, I guess it must have memories Oh yeah, be all these buttons here are probably 10 memories or whatever. What does it actually have? It's more of a business phone, I think. Volume, off low, high. Pone, uh, tone and pulse, or pone and pulse. Recall, hold. Nothing fancy about that, it's not. What's MW? Message waiting, so it must be with like an early touch phone 200 had the message waiting. We've got a, yeah, the hold button with a light. Nice, we can put it on hold, a couple of recall to earth or 90 milliseconds. So I think it's more of a PABX type phone. It does have, maybe it has, it's got a speaker there. Does it have off hook dialing? Or oh, maybe that's what the volume off low and high is. Would you actually have to switch that I wonder? Maybe you flick it to low and you can have an on hook dial, punch in your number, wait till someone picks up it you can hear them at the other end and then you just lift it and talk to them that was a fairly popular feature when ha full hands-free phones were expensive because around this time they were like four hundred dollars or something i scored one of the dick smith ones at a place i worked that had some fault in it i fixed but it was a four hundred dollar phone i forget it was an easy call or something some brand like that and i was stoked to get that going because it didn't cost me anything it was basically in the rubbish just in a box of old phones and stuff and you know i took it and got it going so that was a a good score but yeah ridiculously expensive hands free back in those days and not that much use anyway we've got all corroded stuff on the terminals there uh, that transformer that little, little coreless transformer but the plastic's starting to fall off that so that's gone i think that's just gone brittle through old age but yeah corrosion i don't think this thing's ever going to go again it's got one of these oki OK or several oki OK chips not sure who made this where's it does it say where it's made uh most of the label's gone unfortunately something communications e d e p a 
it looks kind of, well, it's definitely Asian made, maybe Japanese made Mitsuka capacitor for the blocking of the ring signal or passing the ring signal, I guess. Blocking the DC Korean made speaker. Looks pretty much like a lot of answering machines and aftermarket phones, non telecom or Telstra, non carrier sort of phones that you could buy at Dick Smith or wherever or various other telecom or telecommunications shops that sold faxes and phones and stuff yeah that's it's pretty rough I might give it a quick clean up with the toothbrush and some metho just because those components are all corroded at least get rid of the worst of it there's that oh there's a switch yeah interesting there's a switch hidden under the pursuit badge does that come off must do I guess I can see one sort of clip, I'm not real going to touch it. Well, that's an interesting, maybe hidden feature or something. But it's risky messing with these old plastics without knowing what you're doing. Better to, if I can see what is actually going on there. But wasn't unheard of to have things like that little bits that could clip off or often it was the bit where you put your wrote your phone number on the little cardboard bit under a little plastic cover often there might be something hidden under there that board doesn't, oh and now something's happening well, I'm gonna have to take this all apart anyway because if I'm gonna retro bright this I don't want the electronics in there switches out, I guess the speaker needs to come out and I can probably give this board a good scrub as well oh we've got a loose wire here, what was that off? is that created off one of these terminals? I don't know where that even came from oh the speaker was it? no, oh there's another one <laughs> it's getting worse by the minute oh that's off the, that would have been off the batteries themselves they've actually corroded right off there, and what's that? that's a piece of um it's like a little piezo thing. It's a little varista thing or something. There must be a couple of pins here somewhere that's missing its central disc. It's probably much like a disc ceramic capacitor without its coating there they are. That would have gone in there. Yeah, the legs are bent the right way. So we've got a piece loose there. That probably isn't battery related. It's more likely being dropped or something's probably caused that or maybe just old age although it is a bit corroded on those so it could be corrosion related who knows you do press those little bits slightly god that's very I can't see how the other bit kind of holds in there Very risky for breaking something. Let's see if I find the appropriate screwdriver. Didn't know that was a separate piece at all, but it looks like it is, but I don't know, it doesn't look like it comes from that side. Seems to slot above the base bit there. That doesn't make much sense because something must clip it in there. Ooh, making some horrible noises. It's not. Oh no, they, that must be clipped. Un, that must be part of the. It doesn't look like it's part of the other piece. I can bend the ends of it out, I can bend the middle of it out. That is not a separate bit of plastic as far as I can tell. So it's sitting on top of that, those little bits. I don't think you can really press that. Something's going to give away in a nasty way probably. Yeah, I've already got a crack in the top here as well. So this phone probably has been dropped at some point. Didn't even notice that before. And that piece is about to drop out. So that's what you find. There's actually two switches. 
these two slide switches are mounted, that one's just about had it from corrosion I think, mounted under that cover. I guess the point is if I can pop that cover it might say what they do, but I'm not sure I'm going to do it. But I'm going to mark it in the process I think. Oh, can't be that difficult. Maybe I added that crack to it because I just noticed I was levering against that area. If I'd, I've got one of them loose here, if you twist it the right way. Oh, here we go. It says it's something molded into it. MOH on off. Oh, music on hold, maybe? 100 volt MW, MW or message weight off 100 or 50 volt. Maybe that's for different. PABX systems, I must send a signal out to tell that light to come on. So it looks like that's switchable for different PABX systems. Or maybe phone exchanges. Because they did make a... No, I think they're all PABX phones, the ones that are the touch phone 200s and stuff. Yes, yeah, using music on hold. Oh, I wonder, yeah, maybe you can have music on hold out your speaker. That was another feature they had on these either hands-free or non-hands-free if there was music on hold in the building you could actually listen to it I remember the phone systems I used to install Mercury ones for TR services they had that feature and if you wanted to listen to news you'd tune it to the local commercial FM station or something and you could actually listen to the radio play some music out of your phone just while you're sitting there with the still with the handset on on the hook and if anyone tried to get through to you it would just kill the music and ring like normal oh well, it's actually got some sort of circuit in here too but look at it I didn't notice that that again is all corroded and disgusting those batteries we have a lot to answer for you can actually still read some of that transmission and dial circuits it doesn't really give you much there's the speaker there's a bridge rectifier Ugh, yuck god knows what toxic muck that is Possibly the hook switch and is it the speaker? That's the handset, yeah. Speaker and microphone. So a basic circuit, nothing of particular use. Give the linesman a little bit of idea or technician. Looks like, is that tone dialer tone? Something. I would have thought that was part of the dial circuit. Tone. Deno. Recall switch, I think that is. Absolutely filthy. And that's absolutely filthy. Yeah, there's the battery terminal. It's actually dropped off the thing. But look at this, it is actually a cream colour possibly, so maybe I'm... I always thought they were a lot whiter than that. Maybe I'm a little paranoid that it's changed colour and oh, you can just see it, so yeah, it's cream. It is a cream phone. Definitely got a bit darker there. It's mainly that, so it's not that bad actually, so this might be alright for a quick light touch up. Weird bulge in the handset, but that is normal. I thought it was melted for a second. So to be fair to this, it is actually a cream telephone. For some reason, I thought this was meant to be a lot lighter colour. I'm sure a new one they had online for sale was quite a bit lighter. Yeah, and to be fair, that that's all dark. So this part is darker. What's where's the back bit? I guess we can do a comparison. No, yeah, you can see the difference. Not a lot, but that's good to know. So I can probably just do this top cover. I don't need to do the bottom one. Of course, it's the one with everything attached to it. And can we get these keypad things off in one piece? Or are they going to have buttons and stuff go everywhere? They probably all want cleaning anyway. And the 
old oak circuit boards are a common thing. Looks like a million pieces. But really, if you're going to clean up a phone for your collection, you need to do this anyway. Clean every button, every switch after disassembly, every hole that they go through, and speaker grill, and whatever. Because it will never look 100% otherwise. Try and get those buttons to all drop off. I guess I better try and keep all the recoil and whatever. Now, do those buttons need doing? Maybe I should leave the boards in place or tape them or something. I don't really want to put these rubber bits in the solution. Oh, and there's one more. Is that an LED? What the hell holds that in place? I think that's glued onto those pins. Well, look at it. That's a pain. Can I get it off without it wrecking the pins? A little bit of super glue or something. Ooh, making that not but good noise, isn't it? There goes one of the pins. I think the other one's about to follow it, so we'll just have to glue that back in place. That's well and truly glued on. And the speaker's is actually clean, but something's damaged it, or it was damaged from the start. Maybe it's had silverfish in here as well. Why not, I guess? Everything else is not too good. What have we got here? Some sort of speaker grill. I might remove that if it comes off. It's glued in the middle, I think. Uh, that's filthy. Carefully take that off. Damn, what you can do is actually flip it upside down, possibly. I think that hole is also in there, so something's... Well, that's, I guess, the only place something could get through. So unless the battery's done that as well, but we might flip that upside down. It's mainly out of the recalls already upside down, only holding recall, the rest of it's just the normal buttons. All the other ones are interchangeable. I do want to get the, I think what we'll do is just the old pour them out on the bench trick. Each one of those can be individually cleaned. We want that bit of paperwork. Now there's a little round hole there to flick it to one side and bend it up. Everything else just wants to clean. I think it's just this piece. Oh, there's another one there. Easy to miss these things. Some of these phones have them everywhere. And those bits of plastic won't cleaning, so we'll get rid of that. That's pretty much just down to the top cover. Yeah, it's gonna be a bit iffy. Yeah, I wonder if I did put that crack in there. And we probably want that piece back in place. Yeah, that's definitely, well, I don't have to put it back in place yet because I'll get that glue off it. Of course, it's got one patch that isn't burnt. And the rest of it is, so that's gonna make it a bit more difficult to get that right. That actually rubs off, which is good. Makes life much easier. That's not gonna come off. That's got almost all of it. That's it. And unfortunately, you can't really use that as a reference because that'll get lighter as well. But generally, when this other bit's sort of similar colour to that, you know you're pretty close. So that's a bit of an odd one. We'll get that in the solution if we get some sunny days. And I'll get the board cleaned up just to prevent any further corrosion and get all the other parts cleaned up and we'll see what that one comes up like but yeah I'm sure I saw one that looked quite a bit lighter than that but that's that seems to be the colour this one was I think they're all the same maybe it was just the what they look like online for some reason I was under the impression it was lighter I say I don't think I ever saw one of these in the flesh before I got this one I knew they existed so maybe I don't know, maybe I'll send them in brochures or something or advertising. Dunno. 
Anyway, we'll get that one cleaned up and we'll go from there. 